and clinging on by their fingertips. Now, extra time can be an anti-climax with tired legs and weary minds. Not here, though. You ain't seen nothing yet. Well, I just wondered at the start of extra time, Martin, that throwing on Tony Cotty was obviously a gamble. They had the problem now of having three out-and-out -out strikers, and it is noticeable that they've dropped Mike Newell back into the midfield area, so Howard Kendall, not that silly to take the chance this early on in throwing three up front. Well, Newell has made his way forward at the moment, hoping a cross might come in towards him, which it does. He's jumping with Nicol. Oh, and it's Cotty again. 31 seconds on my watch into the first period of extra time. Well, there's no doubt this tactic has caused Liverpool problems tonight in dealing with it. It's a great leap from Mike Newell, and it's only unfortunate for Tony Cotty that it's slightly behind them. It's the one thing that made it difficult. Well, Cotty wants to be involved in the quarter-final at Upton Park. Most of all, he wants to win a regular place back in the Everton side. A winner now. Uh, be a feather in the cap, that's for sure. Expected Barnes then, and in the end, maybe look for a free kick. Newell, Everall, if I was on the Everton benches, I feel that physically they've had to put more into the game than Liverpool, Martin, that they've had to chase it three times, and I just wonder if that will tell an extra time. We talk about the demands of extra time, and just how demanding is it when you're a player? It's very demanding physically, because you, the game has ended, you have to pick yourself up again and go again for another half an hour. It can sometimes be a very tentative affair extra time. But not here, <laughs> with Barnes. Because of the tiredness and, and tired legs and people frightened of losing, it can be tentative, but this is a super run from Barnes. And delivered into the most dangerous of areas, but good goalkeeping. Yes, as the ball came in there, Neville Southall didn't have to look at anything but the ball because he knew Ian Rush would be on hand. It's uh, 15 goals that Rush has now uh, put past Southall. There have been uh, a couple of other goalkeepers, Bobby Mims and Jim Arnold, for Everton that Rush has put to the sword, but mostly it's been Southall. Uh, a point that uh, Ian regularly makes to Neville when they're together on Wales trips. Fresh. 
survived on this occasion. But it's a Liverpool corner. Ominous signs for Everton, though. No John Barnes, as you say, seems to have come to life in extra time, Martin. Mulvey. Rush with another header. Corner taken. Assessment in a moment. Nickel. McDonald. Ian Rush got to terrific power into the header because there wasn't that much on the ball as it reached him. The spring south all showed. to say that it's the best spell Barnes has had in the match. Kendra. Nickel knew that uh, Hinchliffe had got the ball past him. Seven minutes played in the first period of extra time. Everton three, Liverpool three. Hinchcliffe. Well, the uh, crowd noise told you everything there. <laughs> Let's have a look at the uh, Southall save first. You did see that this is something that Ian Rush has improved, his heading ability, and this proves it. That's a wonderful header and a superb save from his Welsh international counterpart there to deny him yet another goal. Watson. Rush looking to try and intercept the back pass and tiredness can be mental as well as physical. There was no danger, though, that Dave Watson didn't know Rush was there. <laughs> I think 20,000 20, voices told him so. Yes, it was like uh, one of those occasions in a pantomime where somebody sneaks on stage and the audience lets the hero know. <laughs> but this is no pantomime here. This is a drama. It's wall-to-wall -wall entertainment. Which way is it going to go? Is it going to go Liverpool's way with Rush? No. Hussein. who uh, must be the envy of every footballer with a weight problem. He's got absolutely nothing extra to carry around and he's looking as sprightly as anyone on the pitch. Barnes, we'll get to Watson though first. Thornton didn't quite uh, get the angle right on the pass. Centre for Liverpool, Rush of course is one. Oh, Barry Benison. Let's see what the corner brings. Benison and Nicol have swapped roles, which was why Benison got into the penalty area then. It's Hussein this time. Ratcliffe can't get it away. Newell. Five minutes to go before half time and extra time.
Bearsley. Greatest player on the park in this period, apart from that man we just seen Neville Southall, who's had to be tremendously alert to produce two stunning saves. Barnes, it looks for goal! about this man that hasn't already been said. Look at the bend on it. A goalkeeper that's in the form of Southall has no chance. It's a quite magnificent finish and I don't apologise for using the word magnificent because that's what it is. Few would have tried it, even fewer could have accomplished it and maybe only John Barnes could have done it with his weaker foot. Southall's series of saves, punctured by the brilliance of Barnes. It's a match that almost defies description now. And what can Everton be thinking? They keep slipping back down the hill. Or should I say being shoved back down it? Well, there maybe have been one or two question marks about a couple of the goals that they may have been able to prevent, Martin, but there's quite, quite literally nothing they could have done to have prevented that finish. He has looked the brightest man in the park in this extra time. For some reason or other, I felt he'd been very subdued over the normal period of time. For some reason or other, he's come alive in extra time. Two in front. Everton have had, never had the thrill of being in front at all. It's been first this way and then the other, and Everton maybe have just one chance to get parity back before Neil Midgley turns them round again. I tell you what, they won't be talking about whether Neil Midgley should have given a penalty on Sunday for very long now, will they? They'll be talking about this. Everybody who's seen it will never forget it. You are watching one of the all-time great FA Cup ties. And John Barnes emerged from really the periphery of it in the first period of extra time. Liverpool have recaptured the lead because of that, because of this. It's the perfect angle on it. It shows how bewildered Southall was left. 
Martin, if that goal had taken place in Italy or South America, they would be raving about it for years. I hope we give it the same sort of credit. retrieves it Substitutes seeking an answer to Everton's problems there. for Bruce isn't it again I mean I, I've got some sympathy with Steve Staunton because it's there to be headed well Liverpool a, a mixture of marvellous play and defensive mayhem If I've said it once, I've said it a million times tonight, it's that aerial ball that they haven't coped with. And McCall picking up the pieces, just couldn't keep his shot down. Everton three, Liverpool four, you have to keep saying it to believe it. 12 minutes to go, in extra time at Goodison Park. Not one person has left. That I think we can guarantee. It's going to be the aerial route again, and you can't blame Everton. It's the best card they hold. something wrong in there. Well, the tension of the Evertonians and the Liverpool fans will be feeling better, of course, but still worried. As long as there's a second left in this game, the way it's been tonight, Martin, they'll be worried. When did Liverpool last let a lead slip four times in one match. When did they last do it three times? Beardsley. Here's Barnes. Burrows. Rush waiting in the middle with Barry Venison. Oh, beautiful. 
beautifully constructed by Liverpool and Beardsley. Can he get the hat trick? No, he was uh, entitled to look for it. And Everton leg took the pace off the shot. Donald trying to drive it beyond Staunton. Ten minutes to go. Put in with Cotty then, as if Cotty might have done likewise a second or two earlier. There's little Howard Kendall can do now, really. And he's got to trust to the courage of his players, and they've had that in abundance here. All Kennedy of Lee should be asking for is not for his team to make any more errors, just to defend properly for eight more minutes. And how can he really believe that might happen when you see things like this? Some, uh, <laughs> great control by Cromola and by Staunton, it's outrageous. It's not from the coaching manual. And uh, Liverpool, who just got past. Blackburn were nearly knocked out by Brighton. And they're still leading against Everton, but only just offside. You start to think of football cliches like if your name is on the cup, don't you, in these circumstances? After what Liverpool have been through. There's been plenty of signs of that so far this season for that man, isn't there? And he could he would be not excused for thinking that. to uh, keep as much together as a unit as they can, as Everton will let them. And Newell gets in first as well for his side. And Sharp, the support is there from Cotty. And a turn from McDonald. Newell on the far side. McCall trying to drive ahead of the ball from midfield to reach the knockdown. Did very well. Oh, and Hussain has been a goal across it! They're back from the net again. Well, I can't believe this, Mark. When all Kenny Douglas would have wanted was his team to defend properly, they go and commit something like this. And Cocky doesn't need any more than that. It was Mulby who played it, Hussein who let it run, and Cotty who struck. Whose name's on the cup? Pass. Five minutes to go. So in extra time, we've seen John Barnes to a tee. Tony Cotty likewise. The snapper up of trifles who hasn't given Everton what he wanted, what they wanted, but he has shown tonight why he was a 
valued at £2 million when West Ham let him go for that sort of money. I think if anyone said to me, Martin, anything about the character of this Everton side, I'd have to take them to task. Any team that's gone down four times against a side at Liverpool and clawed their way back into it, that's got character. Barnes, who must have been thinking that his wonder goal was going to be a winner. trying to buy Everton some time very nearly accomplished it Beardsley and the ball and very nice foot kick by McDonald what a time it would be for Everton to get in front for the first time and what a time it would be for a substitute to come on and be credited with a hat trick Barnes Benison into the last three minutes. I refuse to believe there are any more twists left in this game, Martin. Surely it must finish 4 4. You'll be telling me soon that uh, commentating is more draining than playing. For a night like this, you might be right. I'm shattered. Taunton. Barnes for Beardsley, but not to rush. The Evertonians want a winner. They're not fully satisfied with the uh, recovery, although they uh, are so thrilled by it. is there again under a little bit of pressure but takes his eye off it and just for a second Tony Cotty must have thought a hat trick was beckoning Pinchcliffe to go on a night when you're proud to say we were here and I hope in uh, your armchairs you've been as thrilled as we have in the stadium Martin anyone who's watching this game tonight and hasn't enjoyed every single minute of them as moot for me is not a football fan it's been quite magnificent. It's been a night to shake the soul, really. And maybe, maybe in truth it's right that they come back again to settle it. I couldn't agree more. I think if, if there had been a loser tonight, I think you would have had sympathy with 
whoever, whichever team that was, and it is quite fitting, I feel, on a night like tonight, that they have to come back and do battle again. The next game will be here at Goodison Park. They've already tossed for that, and that's what we get. Fabulous, phenomenal. Those are the sort of words that come to mind. John Barnes made it 4-3 with a wonderful goal in extra time. Tony Cotty tied it up again. The fourth time that Everton got up to the slope top that time and they weren't pushed back by Liverpool again. Two for Peter Beardsley thrown into the mix. Two for Graham Sharp as well. Everton 4, Liverpool 4 and on this very special night that was absolutely right. No one deserved to go out of the cup. Two days later, Merseyside and the footballing world is stunned. Kenny Dalgleish announces his retirement from the game, citing the pressures of management. The news is a bolt from the blue. What a record Dalgleish leaves. Ronnie Moran takes over as acting manager. Now it's back to Goodison for the second replay. The date, Wednesday, February the 27th. Over 40,000 are packed inside. A marvellous atmosphere.